Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Irka. I work for Isovalent. Uh, this presentation, or hopefully later discussion, is about how we currently uh, resolve uh, functions in the in the BTF uh, data. Timo Becker's reported problem that if you that if you actually uh, want to attach a program uh, to the function through the jump line uh, and you have like multiple functions with the same name which will which will happen if uh, you have like a static function with the same name defined all across uh, some objects in the kernel they will at the end uh, will be linked together in the uh, VM Linux object so if you have a program that you want to attach to uh, one of these uh, specific static function, you can actually never be sure that that's the function that you are attaching to because uh, because uh, we are actually looking for the uh, functions in the BTF just by the name. So if you have multiple static functions with the same name, uh, you basically uh, have no idea uh, where your program pr program will be attached to. Uh, the problem is that we are actually, uh, we have normally like kernels full of global functions, which name is enough. When it comes to the static functions with the same name, we have this problem. So uh, libbpf has uh, we use this uh, function btf find by name find own, where we basically say that we want to uh, look up the function by the name and the first match uh, on the name uh, will give, give us the BTF ID. Then for the trump line, uh, we basically need to load the program with the BTF ID and the verifier has this sort of uh, logic uh, inside. It takes the BTF ID uh, of the function, it gets the name of the function, and then using KLSIM lookup name uh, to actually get the address of the function. And for static function that can be uh, that can be multiple addresses, of course, for the name if there are like multiple instances of that function. And KLSIM does the same things as we do uh, in the BTF data. It uh, takes the first match. So these are like two levels uh, that we can uh, we can uh, get it wrong, and we cannot be sure. Uh, where the probe will actually end up. Uh, this is actually not uh, the worst uh, problem. Uh, there was, there's also mm, regarding to this, uh, there can happen that you verify program for one function, one set of uh, arguments in the prototype and the program is being attached to another functions with different arguments, uh, with the different prototype, and suddenly the program gets verified, uh, loaded, it can be executed under uh, the different function, and that can lead uh, also to crashes. Fortunately, this was already fixed. Uh, we have a, a power fix by, uh, made by Ellen, and the fix basically ensures that whenever we have like multiple functions with the same name, they need to share the same prototype. So uh, so we won't have this problem that I, uh, that I just described. The problem with actually not being sure where your probe will end up is still there. And that's basically what I was hoping uh, to discuss. So when we were uh, when we were discussing this several weeks ago, there were several suggestions on the mailing list, so I put them to, uh, to the proposal, like to be some sort of starting point. Maybe we can get uh, from them so somewhere. So, th so the basic problem uh, uh, is that we use just the function name, uh, so to fix it, uh, and being able to identify uh, the function, uh, we should use the path together uh, with the function name. Uh, 
the suggestion was also to use declaration tag uh, to store uh, that information uh, for the function. Then we need to add some libpf support for that, so um, basically being able to find based on the path and the function uh, function name the function. That's one part of the problem, and another is actually being able later in the kernel from BTF ID uh, to get uh, the address uh, that would be specified by path and the function. So I will go like step by step what I was able so far to uh, find out on that. So actually adding the declaration tag uh, to the BTF uh, for the function is uh, really easy uh, power change. Uh, I, I didn't do any optimization. I just added a uh, declaration tag for every function and it was like one megabyte increase in the BTF data from six to seven uh, megabytes in my case. Then we need the libbpf uh, function that would actually return the BTF ID uh, for the path and the function, which I guess could be easily done. And the last part of the puzzle is actually when we are in the verifier and we have the BTF ID, we need to mm, get uh, the function and path from that uh, BTF ID, which the data is in the BTF data, so we should be able to do that. But now we need to get the address, and the address at the moment, the KL sim allows you to search only uh, by the function name. So we would need to add the functionality we would need to be able some, somehow to store the path together with the function name in the KL sims and at interface function that will actually give us the address together with the path. Uh, yeah, I also was exploring that, so KL sim at the end of the build, uh, it just generates uh, the assembly file uh, with all the uh, with all the symbols, and we can actually add like indexes to the paths. It was just like proof of concept that if something like this could be even uh, doable, yeah, and that might be actually the case. So that's like one proposal to store the path uh, with the function name. Another might be store directly address of the functions directly in the BTF, which uh, which brings probably other questions, but yeah, so that's my starting point. If you have... Uh, you mean, no, this is just the slide. I, so for the second proposal, I wasn't sure, so I was using the declaration tags uh, for the path, and that's basically a string. So I wasn't sure how to store the address in there for the function. So I guess maybe a third option is if you go back one slide where you say you store the paths here, you could just add a, add a thing where you go from BTF ID directly to address like you just order it differently. It's like BTF IDs are sequential. You would have to have it for every BTF ID in the kernel, so it's not a sparse thing, but it might be less So you mean to store parts. BTF IDs even here? Like in no, the so the BTF ID is the index to the array that you build here, and then the array contains the addresses for each ID, and then of course there's gonna be some entries that are gonna be zero because it's not actually a function, they don't have an address, but that way you could go from BTF ID to address, at least for the specific case. So just a quick comment about this before I forget. Uh, so with this approach, the obvious, obvious downside is then you're sorting the path twice, once in BTF and the second time in KLSIM. So it's double. Mm. So it's like two separated subsystem, right? I mean.
Alexis said, then the same strings twice in the index, so I will still bloat it. Um, mm. Another thing I wanted to kind of say about the, like putting the the um, path into the decal tag, I think that's a creative or good use. A um, little bit of a comment is like, essentially BTF started out by stripping out the compilation units, and now we're adding back in the compilation units. So maybe, I think that's fine. I think that's going to be necessary, but ultimately you should ask ourselves, what if we need uh, these compilation units, not just in functions, but in other things like in structs, for example, or, you know, there's like the ring buffer example. How many ring buffers do we have in the kernel? Like, if we go for the tag route on the other things, on structs, for example, like, does it still scale, or do we have to uh, come up with a better idea? That's something I would also be curious about. Hi, uh, my question is about the path because uh, do we share the path always uh, start from the same source root or because a relative path sometimes will change by different compile unit. So I'm not sure. I understand I mean that the path may be the same file, maybe have a different path, a relative path in after compile in the object file, the past. Ah, sorry, I, d I don't get it. <laughs> because uh, the same file, for example, uh, if you define a static function in a header file and it include by different companion or different source file, then that will maybe app when we c compile and generate an object file, maybe have a different relative path we called in the object file. So we probably need some way to formalize this to a uh, relative to the tree, to the root of the tree. I did not see that actually happening, but yeah, I mean, if you can end up with some relative path, it should be absolute path. So yeah, I, I didn't, I was just, this was just like proof of concept that we can do it in, in the chaos sims. I didn't like, uh, think about any optimization there. Uh, basically, the my question is if this is like, if it's this is the way we want to uh, we want to do that. Like, uh, I guess we need some other way for static functions than looking for them just with the name. We need the path as well. Uh, good question. So. It feels like we're kind of proposing a way to do namespacing generally in the kernel for symbols, right? Like we have to go into KL sims and provide paths, which makes sense. Um, has this been an issue for like ftrace or anything anything else in the past, do you know? I mean, obviously it has been, but <laughs> does anybody, do you know if like any solutions have been proposed? Uh, not that I know of. I remember discussing this address in the um, BTF like uh, a really long time ago. And just recently, uh, we had this uh, issue that we need to fix the pahole form for, for. And yeah, basically, the thing that if you want to actually attach program to static function, which shares the name with all the others, mm -hmm. you have no idea where you, where you will attach. So. Yeah, uh, for ftrace, um, when you do like a function, well, if you say uh, enable by function name, you'll actually connect to every single function with that name. So if there's three of them there, it will actually connect to three of them. I have ne yet to hear anyone complain about this. Um, well, most of the times, I guess people don't connect to things that have multiple names, but I have noticed this. Uh, one way around it, at least, in s is a kind of a trick I have is in the set available filter functions file, you can actually enable by index. So if you actually know which file is, but or which function you want to attach to, so if you only want to attach to one, you actually can pass the index into it. And that would also, well, the index, well, I mean, like, th what I meant by the index was the fifth function down. So if you know, because it's basically equal to KL sims is there. So is in the same order of KL sims? Uh, actually, it's not. So probably you actually have to find a way to get the address of, or trial and error, I don't know. But yeah, that's something that I've thought about before, but haven't yet implemented. I think the address style probably is the best. 
uh, because typically if you have a, a same function name and appear in many places, people will check DOF and uh, try to find uh, the DOF information which contain a path and also the IP, uh, the PC address, lower mm -hmm. and upper. And uh, uh, in that particular case, uh, a declaration tag with the uh, address will be the best match, I would say, because uh, in current way, even the BTF encode the path and uh, the user uh, not sure how to encode this path and uh, in their way, they will let it over absolute. I, I don't know, 100% sure, I would agree. So the, you would suggest to store directly address, the address? Uh, address, yeah. And using the declaration tags? Yes. But it stores the string, right? Uh, declaration, yes, it is a string, but that's okay, you can convert. Yeah, just copy paste the address, yeah. Okay. So to elaborate on Yon Hong's point, uh, KL seems is one way. You have name, uh, address, maybe the same name, different address, but you can have name in multiple addresses. And with a static function in line in multiple places, like Dwarf has all of this information, we can do the same with BTF. If we have here's BTF ID, here's the function like prototypes, here's all the arguments, and here's the addresses. And how you encode it with a decal tag or whatever else trick we use, it's implementation mm. detail. Actually, uh, one use case I think, uh, well, actually, kind of a side use case would be would be nice to be able to like connect, or at least for tracing wise, to pick a file and say trace all these functions within this file. So I don't know if there's a way to attach. If there was an easy way to match functions to like where they exist in a file, it would be really nice to say, I want to trace everything in this file. Mm -hmm. Filter on the file. So that's one thing. Someone's calling me, so. I mean, that would, and that would be sufficient for static functions, obviously, right? Yep. <laughs> Filter it by a compilation unit. So are the addresses available at compile time, or can they change later? Of the functions, I mean. So yeah, they are in the dwarf. There might be. There might be maybe problem when the kernel can be actually like relocated to different address. But was your question? Uh, wait, so are the addresses the same? You know, at compile time? No, that it's relocatable. Most functions or kernels relocatable, so um, the address could be any. Like when you, each boot could be a different address. The function could be at a different ad IP address at every single boot. So then how generating it at compile time would work? Yeah, we would need to. So I think the, the proposal is to like to record address, like relative file of sets uh, from linking time. But like I think there are multiple stages, right? Like once we compile more or less finalized VM Linux dot O, then like we go through like few la a few steps where like we relink it, like we add like KO sims, then yeah. like we relink again. Like would that potentially change some of the addresses or no? The, the address will be correct in final binary because it's a relocation, it's not like uh, Whatever you call is changed and the relocation will be. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I need to double check that part and whether the final one or not. Yeah, yeah. 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 It seems like Yong Kong's proposal is actually to emit relocation into BTF data so that linker actually, if it adjusts the offset, will update the BTF data. Except if you do it through decal tag, then it's a string, and then linker probably cannot update just a string with like hex representation. Yeah. So. Yeah, 
I mean, I, this is this isn't really like a scientific argument, but it feels like this is a namespacing problem, right? Like it feels like it's something that should be solved with with strings and with paths to me. Like, I mean, is is there some way that you could just, yeah, I mean, like have a figure out an offset of file name to um, to function name and then just call kale, like structure the k probe so that you know you include the file name somehow. And and call into KL Sims and add the path lookup function that you mentioned. I mean, it feels like, yeah, it, it just feels like a namespace problem to me. But yeah, <laughs> there are two problems, right, that you described. One is uh, in user space, be able to say this is kind of the the function that I'm talking about and get a BTF ID for it. And then in kernel space, take the BTF ID and get metadata for it, right? And I think it wasn't clear to me which side of, which problem you're specifically addressing, right? The first one, which is like user space, I can figure out which, you know, function this is or in the kernel space. I'll have to think about it. So I think if you can use the path name everywhere, you don't need the ID, right? Because user space can pass the path name, and then kernel can index via the path name, so you don't you don't need the BDF ID. <coughs> but there are many APIs that already take BTF IDs, right? So it would be nice if we could just keep using those. Yeah. Or yeah. you know, specifying app replace, app attach, etc. To do all of these go through BTF IDs already. It so would need to change the interface of the BTF, BTF yeah. programs. So I think it, in, in terms of like making this easy to upgrade to, it's like better to say in the kernel you can go from BTF ID to additional metadata and then in user space you get additional stuff to figure out what the ID is. Uh, Edward online has a comment about module. I would do. Do you want to speed it up? Um. So there's an online comment about the module low and unknown. I think here's a comment about what that may happen, and there's a patch patch set up there. Uh, do you aware of the patch set about module low and unknown thing? Mm, no. <laughs> I mean, are you talking about the patch? There's a patch set to add like path or unique KL sims already out there. Is that, have you seen already? that? Yeah, there's been. I, I didn't send anything for confirm. Oh, that was, <laughs> okay. So yeah, there's been talk about um, a way of making KL sims different for functions and adding paths and such like that. There is a patch set out there. Was it a build? No, I don't think it was build idea. It was something different. It was just like, it actually was like a few months ago that. I think it ended up as a KL sim iterator. I think what you're referring I'll have to. to. Go, let me go check my inbox or my folder. Well, I think the I think I just want to make sure I understand the thing. One of the problems is we want the kernel to have this information so that it could differentiate the user space in the kernel to have a synchronization to know which function it's talking about, right? So some sort of tagging or something. And the problem is if we put like a path name that also could bloat the kernel because all that's going to be in the memory. I think that's the fear about, you know, putting a, you know, this function belongs to these files or yeah. unless we could compress it somehow and. Yeah, for me, I mean, storing the path, yeah, it has the potential of bloating the kernel size, but yeah. Another thing is, so if you store the address actually uh, for the function, uh, we will have it. Uh, we will have it also in the kernel BTF, so the verifier could take it from there. Uh. Yeah, that would solve the thing, but the allocation might be the problem. So if we include out of tree module in the discussion, like even the pass plus function name is not enough to avoid all the collision, right? You can have two modules have like a call dot C type hmm. show. 
Uh, that might be right. <laughs> so we need some other sort of ID. Yeah, I mean, that's this really feels like a general problem for the kernel, right? Like, for doesn't wouldn't live patch also potentially run into this? It's like you can have within a module even multiple instances of a function that you want to live patch. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think, um, I don't think they, there's two ways to connect to a, a function. There's one through IP address and one through uh, function name. I think there's something that probably verifies that this is, the f I probably c converts it to an IP address somehow. I'm assuming that it may do that. Because if it looks at KL sims, finds the address in KL sims that it could then map to Yeah, sorry, sorry if I'm misunderstanding you, but for, for live patch, like there's a field wi you, which we which when you insert the live patch module is just an old name and it's just a string with a function. Yeah, so it's I think it's yeah it's it, th like the kernel has just al always operated under a global namespace assumption. Um, hmm. So and it's I think people have just put <laughs> plug their ears and pretend it wasn't a problem. I wanted to come back to Song's point about kernel modules. The way that a lot of the APIs now work is that you actually, you like giving the BTF type ID is not enough. You give the kind of the a, a, a handle to a BTF object. That's kind of the blob. So if you want to attach to a a function that is it lives in a kernel module, the way you do it is you find the kernel module. You, g you get a handle for that kernel module basically through the BTF syscall. And then in that module, you find the function or the type that you're interested in, and then you pass both to the syscall. So you have like two 32-bit IDs, and then the first identifies the, the, the module, and like uh, the, the convention said zero is basically the kernel. Mm. And then the, the, there's a type ID that says, in this specific thing, like it's either the kernel or the module, this is the type that I'm interested in. Yeah. If we get all of the APIs onto that, and we also had a way of saying like, oh, this is actually in, in the VM Linux, this is the path that the function was originally at, blah, blah. then we could make it unambiguous about which, like, is this in the kernel, is this in the module, is this the function I'm interested in, et cetera. Yeah, the patch set is um, K, uh, K all mod sims. All right. Have you remember that one, or? I think that it eventually end up as, K all sim BPF iterator. Is that I think they wanted to add like K mod all sim file to the proc, right? Yeah, something because like they that. wanted all the other information, but they can do it with the BPF program iterator, like through. Did K that get in at all? Or and that's that's in. That's merged. That's merged. Where is it? K all sim iterator we have, right? No. I think. But that was actually the answer. That was, sounds like that was to solve this problem. Uh, reliable symbol address lookup. That's actually the name of this patch set. KL sims reliable symbol address lookup with proc k all mod sims. Yeah. Um, no, it doesn't look like it did. No, I didn't go to the BPF. The only bus. <laughs> yeah. I'll, 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 well I'll just, yeah, I'll just forward, I'll send the link, or let me just reply to this and CC. It's, it was originally set uh, December 5th of last year. So, I'll send that to the list right now. Thanks, I will check. All right, um, do you, did you have a last comment, or, okay. Do you still have slides, or? No. All right, so thank you very much. And now is a coffee break until half past.